Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, I'm bringing back the series here that we've done on this channel for a very, very long time. Haven't done it in a while, though. It's the series where I don't supply the content, and hopefully you don't either. Reacting to armchair GMs on Cap Friendly. So I picked out a couple of them that I thought that would be good to go over. So this first trade here with the LA Kings being Alex Ayafalo to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Semyon der Arginchinstev or SDA, Philip Kral, and a 2022 second round pick. Very important. And the logic behind trading future picks as opposed to picks from this year is that teams haven't had a huge opportunity to scout players. So draft picks from this year might be less valued at this year's trade deadline. SDA is a smaller winger center, more than likely a winger at the NHL level, is 20 years old already, 5'11", 170 pounds. Him and Nick Robertson were line mates with the Peterborough Peets for a number of years in the Ontario Hockey League, had 75 points in 55 games there. You see the 63 assist total there. He is a setup guy. Got into 17 games in the Continental Hockey League this year over in Russia, put up six points in 17 games there. Uh, was blanked in the playoffs, and he is coming back over to North America to play with the Toronto Marlies. But I don't necessarily view him as a must-have, must-keep prospect. If he and Philip Kral, who we'll get to in a minute, are going to get you a rental player like Alex Iafalo, um, I'm there for it. Philip Kral, six foot one, 176 pounds, a left shooting defenseman, 21 years old. Played in the Czech Republic this year. I believe I read or heard somewhere that he played 25 minutes a night with his team, which is absolutely absurd. The one thing that I'm going to say about this player, same thing that goes for SDA. We've seen the last couple of years the Maple Leafs' ability to get guys out of Europe, whether they be a Miko Lettinen or an Ilya Mikheyev that sticks around for a while. Um, you can find players like Philip Kral, and if you can give up an SDA who's similar, I would put him in about the same tier as Philip Kral, um, yeah, I'm giving up both of those players in a second round pick for a guy like Alex Iafalo, who is stellar. But I don't know, I'm sure if that's all the LA Kings were asking for Iafalo, the trade would have been done by now. So if the LA Kings were asking for more than this guy or a better prospect, I would say that I'm okay with giving up the second round pick. I mean, we've given up second round picks for Thomas Mechanics and Brian Boyle in the past. Maybe they're asking for a little bit of a better prospect. And as long as it's not Sandine, Robertson, Mirov, Lilligren, Nymela, Kokinen, Irvinen, um, I'm pretty much okay with throwing in two other guys, you know, if, if they would prefer someone different than, than those two. Hey, if they want another second round pick, I don't mind doing that either. I'll keep coming back to this for the remainder of this video, but the Tampa Bay Lightning gave up a first round pick for Barclay Goudreau, Nolan Foote, who is a former first round pick, and another first round pick for Blake Coleman. I can certainly stomach two seconds for Alex Iafalo. And if you're looking at Alex Iafalo's numbers just on the surface here, this player looks like exactly the guy that you would want to either solidify a checking line with Kerfoot and Hyman. And maybe that frees up Mikheyev to either play on the fourth or the second line there. I don't know. If you got Ilya Mikheyev on your fourth line, that is insane, insane forward depth. And to be able to win the Stanley Cup, to be able to call yourself cup contenders, you don't want just enough. You want more than enough. Next up here, the trade that I'm looking at specifically is, is you might be looking at the Marc-Andre Fleury deal or the Philip Forsberg deal. I'm looking at John Merrill from the Detroit Red Wings. And Alexander Barabanov, third round pick, will discuss what I would be willing to give up for this player in a second. Now, I will admit that Merrill wasn't on my radar until I stumbled across Jordan's tweet here with a nice little pretty analytics card from J Fresh Hockey. And it got me intrigued, got me interested. I dove a little bit deeper and I really, really like what I see with this player. Now, Merrill does shoot left-handed, so that would be displacing Travis Dermott in the top six and that's really where i'm intrigued john merrill's a ufa right now he's 29 years old for the detroit red wings travis dermott every opportunity that he's been given to show that he can be more than just a bottom pairing guy he has absolutely flubbed or just not gotten a long enough opportunity to show um that he can do it 
if the Maple Leafs can get a guy like John Merrill, would the Detroit Red Wings possibly be interested in Travis Dermott as the return? Every single year since his rookie year, he has regressed to a point where he's just been very, very mediocre this year. Like I said, at the beginning of the year or in the offseason, I wasn't comfortable giving up on him because of those first three seasons of his. But at this point, I think we've seen enough. We can move on from him and not feel any sort of regret. If he has a resurgence in Detroit or somewhere else, good for him. It wasn't going to happen in Toronto. He's a great player on the penalty kill. He's limited teams. He's played up against steep competition. I would really like this guy on the Maple Leafs' bottom pair. If you're a Red Wings fan watching this video, John Merrill is a UFA. Acquiring a third, a fourth, or a fifth, or a package of mid-round picks for this guy, I don't think that necessarily helps you, and I don't think letting him walk in free agency is helpful either. If you are going to trade this guy, I would like a return like Travis Thurman. He's got another year of team control left. He's going to be cheap. He's still just 24 years old. He's ready to play and fill a role on your team right now. But if you wanted a little bit more for him, I could be convinced to throw a third year away as well. How does Travis Thurman a third round pick for this guy sound? And finally, this armchair GM just straight up asks the question, what is Matthias Ekholm's value? From the Nashville Predators. Well, according to Elliot Friedman, Nashville is interested in a similar package that the Maple Leafs gave up to land Jake Muzzin a couple of years ago. Of course, that being a first round pick that ended up being, I believe, 21st overall, Sean Dersey and Carl Grundstrom, who were mid to later second round picks. Now, this trade proposal here, I think, is absolutely asinine ridiculous for Ricard and Raquel. For the Maple Leafs, for anyone to think that the Maple Leafs would give up Timothy Lilligren, Kerfoot, and a first-round pick for Ricard Raquel, you're off your rocker. And to suggest that just giving up Lilligren would be the Maple Leafs getting a break, and that the Ducks would more than likely ask for Nick Robertson or Rasmus Sandin, that is a stupidity level beyond. If you really wanted the clicks on this article, if you needed them that badly, just write a trade Nylander article, seriously, at this point, so we can know to just... Ignore it and move on. Jake Muzzin in 2018-2019 is a better player, has more value than Ricard Raquel does right now for the Ducks. And Jake Muzzin on this year's Toronto Maple Leafs team would be more important to the Leafs than Ricard Raquel would be. Why would we be giving up more than what we gave up for Jake Muzzin? Especially when Nashville is apparently looking for something similar to what the Maple Leafs gave up for Jake Muzzin. It, it just doesn't add up. So the first guy, Irvin in, played for Finland at this year's World Junior Championships team. The Maple Leafs got him 59th overall in the second round in last year's draft. 5'9", 172 pounds, which is a bit heavier than what he was when the Maple Leafs drafted him. If he can put on about another 15 or 20 pounds or so, I would say that his size is not an issue it's not anything to worry about that'd be about the same size if not bigger than mitch marner and he hangs just fine i like this player i like this pick if you go back and watch the video that i did talking about when the maple Leafs drafted him it's rare it's really rare for a player this young to be playing full-time over in a men's league and he did that last season in the Finnish Elite League, and he did it again this year, producing more points in less games played. Miko Kokinen, a 5'11", 194 pounds, a left-handed shooting defenseman, 20 years old, also from Finland. The Maple Leafs drafted him in the third round in 2019. This is not a guy, he's in a tier above Philip Krell. So what I said about SDA and Philip Krell, you can sign those players out of Europe. You can't just go to Europe and grab a guy like this. He's in a tier above them. If I had to put NHL comparisons on both Miko Kokinen and Roni Irvinen, I would say that Roni Irvinen is kind of similar to Alex Kerfoot. He's a tenacious 200-foot game um, center winger. We're not 100% sure yet. Um, that plays bigger than he actually is. And with Miko Kokinen, I would say that he's kind of like TJ Brody in the sense where he does have a little bit of a two-way game, mostly a puck-moving defensive defenseman, plays on your penalty kill, is that kind of player. Just very, very smart. And the first-round pick, it's probably going to be mid to late first round anyway. So 
You got to decide. You got to decide. I think with the Jake Muzzin trade, they lucked out. Sean Dursey, well, I wish him good health, obviously, but he's had um, injury troubles in the past, and that seemed to have followed him after the trade. Carl Grundstrom has been effective in the games that he's played so far with the Kings, but not anything more than a third or a fourth line player so far. And the first round pick, Tobias Bjornfoot, looks like he's going to be a real player, a top four defenseman. But so is Jake Muzzin. If you were to give up those two guys, I think you would be giving up a little bit more than what the Maple Leafs gave up in the Jake Muzzin trade. I think there is a little bit more risk in giving up these two players just because they played in men's leagues. They played in men's leagues. You can see an easier path to the NHL for these two guys. Um... I mean, the Finnish Elite League and the American Hockey League are fairly similar, and for these guys to be playing at that level already and succeeding, um, it means something. It means something. These are players. These are real prospects. These guys are in the Maple Leafs' top 10 prospects right now. I've thought about it more. A couple of you called me out on it. You said that Justin Hull, however you pronounce it, I got yelled at when I streamed earlier for pronouncing it wrong. I'm not sure how it's pronounced now, but... He's not an automatic lock to be protected. It's not a reason to stop you from going out and getting Matthias Ekholm. And Justin Hull, really, outside of the first 15 games this year, been kind of mediocre. His numbers have been on a steady decline ever since then. Similarly to last year, started off really hot and then just trailed off afterwards. And people on stream earlier pointed out that maybe his poor play or his play declining is linked to Jake Muzzin's injury. And if Jake Muzzin is propping him up, then we should not really be too worried about losing him in the expansion draft. It still would be a loss because he's a guy who can show that he can play top four minutes and only makes $2 million. That has value. And if he has good chemistry with Jake Muzzin, that has value. Even if Muzzin is supporting him and propping him up, having players who have chemistry is a good thing. But again, I'm sure if that's all it was going to cost to get Matthias Ekholm, the deal would have already been done. But if the Predators were really going to twist your arm and they really wanted one of those top four guys, I know that a lot of people would be willing to throw Timothy Lilligren into that deal. So let's say Lilligren, a first round pick, and Roni Irvinen. But I think that would be a mistake. I don't think that the Maple Leafs are in a position right now to be trading young defensemen, especially when people on stream pointed out Jake Muzzin not getting any younger. TJ Brody not getting any younger. Morgan Riley needs a new contract. Justin Hull can't drive a pairing by himself. Are you really going to give up a guy like Lily Grin who's got a shot? He's got a shot. You can't write him off. You can't do it. A lot of people really, really underrate that guy, and you'd be foolish to. Even though Matthias Heckholm is this good, ever since they moved on from P.K. Subban, Matthias Heckholm has taken more of an offensive role on this team, and it's showed. But this guy can still play defense. This guy can still do this. This is a two-way defenseman. This is a really, really good defenseman. But the Maple Leafs, oh, they got a young, talented forward core. And if you keep trading young, talented forwards, your young, talented forwards are only going to get older. But I think, I think that you can afford to move on from an Amirov if, if you really wanted Ekholm. Like I said, a guy like John Merrill is good. He's good, but, Math but, but Matthias Ekholm is that much better. And if you don't believe me, I will leave a video linked atop the screen looking at Lilligren, looking at Sandine, and you can see their numbers compared to other guys, their ages, playing in the American Hockey League. There haven't been many guys better in the last 20 years. It, it's just that simple. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And remember to subscribe. We're very close to 4,000 subscribers here. And if we can hit that before the end of the season, that would be absolutely crazy, stupidly amazing. I mean, I can't tell you how appreciative I am for the support that I've gotten here on this channel um, the last seven or six months. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope you have all just a great day.